So I finally got to watch Oppenheimer, it finally released here in Korea, and before I was watching it, I was sitting through the previews, which in Korea I feel like are mostly just advertisements, but I saw an ad that caught my eye and it was for Japageti. I'll link the ad down below, it's a short commercial. This girl is kind of like sad and she's at home chilling and then there's this weird man who's dressed in this weird suit that says Sunday on it and basically he's gonna leave and she says, no wait, before you leave, let's have some japageti. And I'm like, what's going on here? And apparently on Sunday, eating japageti, that's the thing to do. Uh, I, apparently the sales are even higher on Sundays for this. And it was all started with their ad campaign, um, commercials on TV, I guess, where it's like, there's some kind of jingle and it's all about eating japageti on a Sunday. So I figured today's Sunday, let me eat some japageti. And if you don't know what this is, it's basically the instant noodle version of the Korean Chinese food called jajangmyeon, the black bean noodle dish. You might've seen it before. And this is the instant version of it. It's pretty good. I actually had this uh, not too long ago from, I ordered it from the PC bong, but um, we're gonna be cooking it up today and, uh, and enjoying it. So this cost me 90 cents at the local convenience store. And um, yeah, 610 calories, so quite a bit here. So, thick brick. I can't lie, that's a, that's a pretty thick brick. And inside we have three things. Looks like with most Korean ramens, you always gotta have the flakes. These are like kind of dried vegetables maybe, and I believe there's soy meat in here. Here's the japageti powder, and you mix it up, and it kind of thickens everything. And we also have some kind of olive oil here. Let's get cooking. Probably should have used tap water for that. Damn it. The reason I say that is because I feel like for this, the, the water is a little bit less important. You're gonna end up throwing away a lot of the water at the end. It's basically used to mainly cook the noodles and then you do wanna leave a little bit left over to kind of create the sauce. It says to leave in eight spoonfuls, but you kinda just gotta eyeball it. All right, now while this is boiling, let me talk about Oppenheimer real quick. So I've been looking forward to this movie for a long ass time, by the way, you might want to skip ahead if you haven't seen it. Spoiler alert, I guess. So, yeah, man. Uh, I didn't really look into the reviews, but I saw that it got a high score on Rotten Tomatoes, which I usually trust. And I was like, okay, you know, I had to wait an extra three weeks or a month to see it because uh, it came released late in Korea. I had watched the previews for it, so I had a certain expectation in my mind. Um, and anyway, I finally go see it. It wasn't in IMAX, but I'll get to that here in a second. But I was really enjoying the first two thirds of the movie. The last third completely lost me. I thought the pacing was all just weird and bogus and not weird in a good way. Sometimes I like weird. I like weird all the time, actually, but in this one, nah. It was bad weird to me, and I was just like, this doesn't need to be three hours. And then the IMAX thing is like, why? What's the big deal about the IMAX? I had a friend who watched it when it came out. He was like, dude, I watched it in IMAX. I'm about to try to watch it in like, what is it, the 70 millimeter IMAX? I'm like, oh, so I had these expectations where it was gonna be like, like IMAX worthy. And I'm glad I didn't pay money to see it in IMAX because what's even the point? I mean, most of it was just talking heads, man, from what I remember. The IMAX thing, I mean, to me, that's even a minor gripe. It was just the pacing of the whole movie and how the two thirds, what I thought was gonna lead up to something and then it kind of did. And then the last third of it, the whole ending, I was just like bored out of my mind. I can see what they're trying to do there, but maybe do it in a different way. So I'm not snoozing by the end of the three hour movie. All right, rant over. Ah, ah! <laughs> shit. I don't have an oven mitt. Oh, I do. Got this for grilling. And I guess I brought it here. Definitely gonna need it. That's for damn sure. God dang. When is this water gonna boil, man? You know what they say, a watched pot never boils. I'm on the 19 minute and 57 second mark, 20 minutes into this video, and we still ain't got a proper boil, man. I'm just gonna complain this whole video. You know, Sundays are not fun days, in my opinion. They can be if you play your cards right, but it's really like, oh damn, I gotta go back to, I always film on Sundays, so maybe that's part of it, but it's, Sundays are like my Mondays. Dude, what is up with this pot? I think it's because the AC is right above me blowing this freaking thing around. Man, it was the AC the whole damn time. Just sabotaging me for like 15 minutes. I was waiting here like, what the frick is going on? Idiot. Flakes going in. 
brick going in. And it says to cook it for five minutes. Uh, this should be pretty good though. Personally, I haven't cooked up japaghetti for probably over five years, maybe more, I don't know. Let's give one a test. Definitely needs more time. They weren't lying about that five minutes of cooking time, man. These are some hefty noodles. So here's where it's gonna get a little bit tricky, especially because who can measure out eight spoonfuls of water in their head? Like whoever wrote that on the packaging for the official, they should be questioned by the authorities, man. All right, but this is way too much water. It's not a super eating. We're, our goal is to kind of make a thick sauce and you don't want too little water because then you're not gonna be able to get that sauce. So. This kind of does come with experience and I don't have much of it here, but I would say maybe something like that. Maybe I'll get rid of a little bit more and see how that works. I mean, at the end of the day, it's 90 cents. So here's where the fun begins. Let me show you what this powder is looking like. Kind of looking like a soil or a fine coffee grinder, although there are kind of bigger chunks in there too. So it's not 100% even, but I think that adds to the, I don't know. Let's see how I did with the water here. Not too bad there. The powder definitely seems to be soaking up a lot of that water. Maybe you can see if I do one of these, there's really no water on the bottom, just kind of a thick sauce that could perhaps coat the back of a spoon and add in this olive oil for extra flavor and mouthfeel. And one last little surprise, sunny side up egg right on top. Now, after all that, I'm just gonna put it transfer to this paper plate. I'm telling you, this would taste a lot better eating out of this, but I'm just gonna use this as a catch zone. And let's get into it. I mean, you can't really go wrong with that. Looks amazing, smells good. I'm gonna take a bite of it plain and then kind of mix in the egg. So first bite, going in. That's good, man. That's just, that's just good. The sauce is, thickens up so beautifully and it tastes good and the texture, it's, it's hot and thick, uh, saucy and just really good. Here's what I would compare this to, even though this might not be the most sound comparison since I didn't grow up eating this, um, it's kind of like, craft mac and cheese so you can get real homemade mac and cheese at a restaurant or you know at home whatever with real cheese and you cook it in the oven maybe put some breadcrumbs on top or whatever and it's home style homemade authentic and real but sometimes you just want that craft or Velveeta or whatever you want this the weird cheese like stuff that comes straight out of that packet that brings me back and sometimes i ain't gonna lie i'll prefer craft over like a legit mac and cheese obviously sometimes the other way around but i feel like this is like that where the real og stuff that you can get at a chinese restaurant it's probably better quality I mean, it is, it should be. They'll use, they'll use real meat, um, actual pork. Mm. But sometimes you just want that stuff fresh out the packet, man. Fresh out the pack, at home, easy. Usually it wouldn't take, I've been recording for 40 minutes now. Usually it wouldn't take that long. Let me tell you what, if I had to create a list of, I might actually make this video someday in the future. I haven't really thought it out. I'm just kind of thinking of it right now, but top five or whatever, must try Korean instant noodles. This would be, I'm not sure what number, but it's gotta be on the list. Let me try to show you a little piece of the meat. I believe it's soy meat. 
has kind of a meaty feel to it. But yeah, there's like a lot of Korean ramens that I haven't even uh, scratched the surface of trying. Um, a lot of the ones with soup bases, especially. But this is so unique to me. I don't know, it just got a real unique flavor and texture and style to it. I'm really liking the style. You would not expect this came out of like a regular ramen looking packet. That's what I'm trying to say. This is really good. I kind of wish I, damn it. Spilled all over my chicken shirt. Some days are the worst. I'm sweating, it's hot. But this did brighten my mood a little bit. Can't lie. Good stuff. Try it out. Go find it wherever you can find it. Cook it up, um, you know, and, and enjoy it because you probably will. I think this would definitely fit most people's taste buds where it might not be your favorite thing in the world, but you're definitely not going to hate it. Like, oh, that's weird. That's spicy. It's not doesn't have any of that kind of stuff. Anyway, I'm about to skate out of here before it's too late. Thanks for watching. I'll catch you all in the next video. Peace.